you guys can see it. If I want to work on question number 16, for question number 16 it says find the zeros of the function algebraically. So I have f of x equals 3x squared plus 22x minus 16. So remember, when it says find the zeros of a function, what I'm looking for is what are the values of x that make my function uh, the function zero. So what that really what we're looking for is when is f of x what values of x make f of x equal zero. So what I'm first going to do is I'm going to that I'm going to plug a zero in for f of x. And now I need to find the value of x. Now, this gets a little bit difficult because when we're trying to do this, usually if we just solve for x, it's pretty easy. You isolate the variable, right? Get everything else on the other side, and you're done. Well, here we have an x squared, and we have a, an x. So it's like, crap, we just can't we just can't get an x on the same side. We have you know, an x squared, and we have an x. So what we look into is seeing if we can put them as a set of linear factors. What I mean by that is you know, factoring. So since we have a trinomial, we can use some of the factoring techniques we've previously learned. You want to learn what? I already used the Go and take a look at your work, guys. I'm just not able to follow, like, like hearing it. Is so it? Let, let me just go and take a look at your work. Well, I'm going to work through the problem, and then let me see if you got the same answer, and then I'll work look at your work, see how you completed. Oh. Is that right? Okay. I don't, I don't know. I, I was trying to listen to here, but I couldn't follow. So let me just go and look at your work, and I'll see what it is. All right. Uh, one way we can do this is we can set up. Uh, if you guys remember the diamond method, a lot of ways, you know, you can set up all the you can do two different you know, linear factors and then take all the factors of three, take all the factors of 16 and see which one works. The diamond method is just kind of a very easy way to uh, organize everything. If up top you do a times c, remember this is a quadratic function. So we can say a is b, or a is three, b is 22, and negative 16 is c. So I do a times c, I do three times negative 48, or three times negative 16 is a negative 48. I put B back down here is 22. So to solve, to figure out the rest of these boxes, what two numbers multiply to give you negative 48, but when you add them up, they give you positive 22. And even when you're doing the diamond and there's no number in front, there's a one in front of there, you're still doing A times C because there's always one times your final number. So yes, it's going to be a positive 24 and a negative two. Now I'm gonna actually, uh, so now there's a couple ways you can do this. You could do, uh, I think what's called like the Berry method and factor it out. Another way you could do this is take these two and put them in a box and then factor out, um, factor them back out. So if I was gonna put three X squared If I was going to put my a, if you put 3x squared there, and you put your last uh, value, which is a negative 16 here, and then you do uh, 24x and negative 2x. Now what if I do is, if I reach one of these, all I need to do is see what I can uh, you know, take out of each one. Or see exactly what my two numbers are going to multiply to give me. So I need to figure out what two numbers multiply to give me 3x squared. If you think about finding the area, you need to find what two numbers multiply to give you 3x squared. So obviously it's going to be 3x times x, correct? So there's two ways. You can put either a 3x here or you can put a 3x there. You're going to want to put the 3x here because you know that 3x goes into 24x. If you put a 3x here, that means 3x times what number gives you negative 2x? 
and that's going to give you a fraction, right? And we don't really want to deal with fractions right now. So we're gonna, I'm going to put a 3x up here and an x up there. So 3x times x gives you 3x squared. 3x times what gives you 24x? Positive 8. x times what gives you a negative 2x? Negative 2. Now what I've just done is created my two, um, two binomials for linear factors. So now I can say 0 equals 3x minus 2 times x plus 8. And remember when we're doing this, we're saying 0 equals one of these. I always say x times y equals 0. If x times y equals 0, one of those equals 0. Yes? Yes, there is another way you can do it with the boxes. And I actually, um, I showed it in a different video, but I'll, obviously you can look up there, but I'll show you, I'll show you another way real quickly. Yes? Is that the method where like, you see where the diamond is, where 24 and 84 are? You put like x, x plus 24 in one, one parentheses, and then x minus two another. Yep, I'll show that to you guys in a second. So then just to finish this off, we know that either 3x minus 2 equals 0, or 0 equals x plus 8. So when I solve for x, my possible zeros are x plus 2 and x equals 8. So that's how you find x equals negative. negative 8. Thank you. Um, so therefore, my possible zeros for the function are negative 8 and 2 thirds. And we'll be able to determine if they're zeros by plugging them back to the equation. And if they give us an f of x equals 0, then we know that it works. Do what? That problem? Yes, I'm going to show you guys that real quick after I turn this off.